All right, so let's take a look at this lattice method or shoelace method. Um, and this is a method for calculating area on the coordinate plane. And the reason it's called the shoelace method, I have these fancy Air Jordans here, um, is that you're gonna use the numbers in a table kind of in this shoelace uh, pattern. So you'll see it in a second. Um, here we go. So here are my axes. Don't forget to label your axes. And here's my shape. This is a triangle. This is just a convex triangle on the coordinate plane. And this method will work for anything on the coordinate plane. If you had a concave shape or you know any kind of weird looking dart, star, whatever it is, it works. And this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start, oh, don't forget to label your coordinates. So we're gonna start with any one of these coordinates and work our way around the shape and just list them in this table. So we're gonna list all of the X values here and all of the Y values here. So you can start with any one. You can go any way you want. You can just go around the shape. Um, so I'm gonna start with this negative five, two and work my way around. So I have negative five, two, negative one, three, negative two, six. So I'm just gonna list them in order. I just went counterclockwise. You could have gone clockwise. Um, but here's the trick. Whichever point you start with, you have to list again. So I'm gonna have to list my negative five, two again. So that's the real trick. Then, why is it the shoelace method? Well, what I'm gonna do is multiply diagonally, like this. So in orange here, I'm gonna multiply these numbers. So I'll do that over on the side here. So negative five times three, that's negative 15. Remember, a negative times a positive is a negative. And negative one times six is negative six. Negative two times two is negative four. Then, add them up. So that's my sum product. I have, sum, uh, I have these products and I'm gonna sum them up. So negative 25. Then, I wanna do the next. So I'm gonna, the other direction. So I'm gonna go negative one times two, negative two times three, and negative five times six. So that gives me kind of these orange and blue laces. I don't know if I would put orange and blue laces on Air Jordans, but hey, whatever. Anyway, so negative one times two is negative two, negative two times three is negative six, and negative five times six is negative 30, which gives me negative 38. Now, your final step is you have to subtract these two pro sum products from each other and divide by two. And what do I mean? Well, negative 25 minus negative 38 equals positive 13. Hold on, wait a minute. So remember, when you have a negative 25 minus a negative 38, remember when you're subtracting a negative, it's that keep change change uh, that some of you probably learned. So this becomes a positive, so you're gonna add. So that gives me positive 13, and then I divide by two, which is six and a half units. Now it doesn't matter which order I subtract them in. Usually subtraction does matter, right? The order does matter in subtraction. Um, it's not commutative, but in this case, it doesn't matter. And the reason is because we have area here. We're finding an area. So area, like distance, has to be an absolute value. So. If I think about this really has to be the absolute value of this number. So I could even say, all right, well, negative 38 minus negative 25, which would give me a negative 13, but I want the absolute value of that number. So that gives me six and a half units squared because 13 divided by two is six and a half. Does that make sense as far as this area? So let's do a little sanity check. Let's take a look at the number of square units we have in this figure here. And does it look like it's about six and a half? Well, let's count up some of these. So those two little pieces there, that's about one. There's another one there, so that's two. There's a, almost a whole one there, that's three. There's another near complete square, that's four. Another near complete square that's five. So maybe I'm short a little bit. So maybe like this little corner here would get me to five. So do I have one and a half left? Well, let's take a look. Those 
yeah, that's about another one. And then I have this little sliver here, this little sliver here. So yeah, I think I'm about six and a half. That looks about right. So from a sanity check perspective, six and a half seems like the right number. And I didn't make any calculation errors. So if you had forgotten to divide by two or something like that, you would still have 13. You count it up, that's no way near 13. Um, so you know you, you forgot to do something. So anyway, that's the shoelace or lattice method. So please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.